Hey everybody, Michael Crump back here again. And if you follow me on Twitter or other social media, then you probably know that I love getting a great deal on console hardware as well as games. Now I've been showing a couple of different tips and tricks on how I test some of the hardware and software. The most recent video was one how to determine if a Super Nintendo cartridge is real or not. So I thought I would just continue that with an episode that is focused on testing PlayStation 4 controllers and really well in general any type of controller. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. So here is a PlayStation 4 controller that hit offer up and the price there was just for $10. And for a PlayStation 4 controller for 10 bucks, that is a very good deal. A lot of the times what I will do with these is I will take the controller, I will test it, I'll do any types of fixes that it needs, as well as maybe even a modification, and then I might resell that in order for me to buy more hardware. So today I wanted to at least talk about the testing process or how I test PlayStation 4 controllers. But again, this will work with a variety of other controller tops. And as you can see, there is these new thumbstick grips that was added onto it, and they are brand new. So taking a look at the controller, the one thing that I did notice was on the back where it shows Sony right here, that did look like it had had quite a bit of wear. So let me grab a newer controller, and you can kind of see on this PlayStation 4 controller, you can easily read that Sony sticker. Now, again, on the one that I bought for 10 bucks, you can see that you are not able to read that sticker due to wear. So I was kind of worried that there was going to be some problems with this controller. So I needed to go ahead and begin testing it out. So that's where you're going to make use of a micro USB cable and go ahead and plug that into your computer. Okay, so we're going to connect our gamepad and we're gonna press a button to continue. And as you can see right here, it does show that that is a Sony PS4 DualShock and it is a wireless controller. We can go ahead and begin testing some of the trigger buttons here. So an L2 and an R2. And as you can see on the screen there, as I'm pressing them, it is showing what they register on the controller below. Now I can also do this with the L1 and the R1 button, and you can see that it's showing it on the controller below. Now, one thing you will want to note here is, is that there is the value. And so when you hold down on these buttons, having a value of 1.00, is definitely where it should be at. And if it's not being pressed, it's obviously 0, 0.00. Now I'm going and testing a little bit of the directional pads here. And I'm also holding them down because as I hold them down, they should stay again at 1.00. And so I usually just kind of play around with the directional buttons and see if there's any sort of stick as well as going ahead and pressing maybe some other buttons on the controller. I typically like to combine some of the directional pads with some of the L1s or L2 pads as well. So at this point, I can tell that for the most part, so far things are looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and let's try the share button. And the share button is registering. I can easily press it the same way here for the options button. It's taken just a moment here to register, but it looks all looks good there. So let's go ahead and let's try the X button and we'll do the square and then the triangle and then finally the circle there. And again, if we hold these down, we should see 1.00 being displayed. Now, I like to go ahead and try to mash and hold down multiple buttons just to see how fast that they register on the screen there. But so far, all this is looking good. And so B17 or button 17 is the touchpad part of it. Again, let's go ahead and just play around a little bit with the L1s and L2s and just kind of get a feel for how this controller is working. So now we'll play around a little bit with the 
directional pads. And as you can see down at the bottom, it has the axis. And if you let go of these, it should stay centered as it's showing right now. Now, if it's wobbling around, then there may be some sort of drift that this controller might have when you actually are playing inside of a game. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to move these around just a little bit more and just see how well that it's registering. So obviously all the way up at the top should be the 1.00. Now we're going to go ahead and put a check here and test circularity. And it says spin the joysticks slowly to test. And basically this circle that you see here should be completely filled in. Anywhere that the circle is not touching means that the controller can't access that. So I usually take a couple of slow spins around in both directions in order to see if it can fill out the entire circle. And in this case, it really is. Uh, it works completely. There isn't any gap that has not been filled in. And you might notice the average error. Now keep in mind, this number doesn't really matter. There isn't a lot of documentation on the side in the first place about what that average error means. But you can safely go ahead and ignore it as long as at least when you try each one of these directional pads that the full circle is filled in. There is also this vibration test here. And so from here, I'm going to press the vibration button and you may not be able to see it, but you will be able on your DualShock 4 controllers be able to test to see if the controller has the vibration functionality onto it. Again, this is a really cool little tool that you can make use of to test controllers without actually having to play a game that uses a lot of these different features. And so for the most part here, everything looks pretty good with this controller. So if I did go ahead and remove this, and let's just say I plug back in this red controller here, which is pretty much brand new. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this back into my controller here. And for the most part, there isn't going to be much of a difference in regards to any of the buttons. Now for the axis here, if we go ahead and we move this around again in a circular motion, the only real difference that I can see here is that the average error is a little bit lower than the nine that it was reported for that other controller, which had a lot of different wear. All of the buttons and everything else pretty much behaves the same way. Again, they're going to the 1.00 very fast. And so that is pretty much going to do it for this one. I hope this video helped you in some way, shape, or form to be able to go ahead and determine if your PlayStation 4 controller is working as desired. And if this video helped you, don't forget to give it a like as well as leave a comment in below. Is there another tool that you prefer to test your PlayStation controllers or just your controllers in general? Let me know. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out.